Hello, everyone, and welcome to Wellness Wednesdays, brought to you by IceWellnessJournal.com, your go-to journal for finding your ideal time to plunge, plus monthly membership that gives you lots of new podcasts, studies, information, et cetera, to check out. Today, we are delving deep into some of the scientific studies behind cold therapy. There's a lot of allegorical evidence out there that supports cold therapy, uh, but what we're going to get into is the actual science behind it. Thank you to my researcher for finding out all the information they could for this episode, and I will be linking to the studies that are referenced below. Before we dive in, please do like and subscribe, and if you enjoy the content you see, please consider sharing it. All right, guys, let's get into it. Our first topic is going to be diabetic neuropathy. Now, I personally do not suffer from this, but I do know people who do, and they've asked me about it. I also used to plunge pretty regularly with a gentleman that had it, and he swore up and down that cold therapy benefited it. There's, of course, been numerous cold plunge studies that show cold plunge and pain, pain management go hand in hand, but this is going to go a little bit further. Because I am referencing scientific studies, there will be parts that I read verbatim, uh, just because it's super important that the science versus the opinion goes out. Okay, so before we even get into the treatments and whatnot, what is diabetic neuropathy? So diabetic neuropathy is a type of nerve damage that can occur if you have diabetes. High blood sugar can injure nerves throughout the body. Diabetic neuropathy most often damages nerves in the legs and feet, and if it gets too bad, it can lead to amputation of the feet or even the legs. Depending on the affected nerves, diabetic neuropathy symptoms include pain and numbness in the legs, feet, and hands. It can also cause problems with the digestive system, urinary tract, blood vessels, and heart. Some people have mild symptoms. Some people, again, it can become quite painful and even disabling. So the first study focused on therapeutic benefits of cold exposure on metabolic disease, such as obesity and type 2 diabetes. The research highlighted how cold exposure can positively impact energy partitioning, glucose regulation, and insulin sensitivity. It also emphasizes the need for further studies, especially in populations with metabolic syndrome and the importance of standardizing cold exposure research in humans. I really like this study because most studies do end with our study concludes we need more studies, and I think it's very, very true of cold therapy. This study was published in journals.physiology.org. The second one focused on neuropathy, but also focused on chemotherapy-induced neuropathy. Uh, a randomized controlled trial compared the effects of cold application and transcutaneous nerve stimulation, or TENS, on chemotherapy-induced diabetic peripheral neuropathy post-mastectomy. Sorry, guys, that's a lot. The findings revealed that cold adaptation significantly reduced pain intensity by 73% and improved sternal nerve amplitude by 44%, surpassing the effects of TENS. This does suggest that cold application could be a more effective method of managing pain for this specific condition. But again, this did appear to be a cold application versus a cold plunge study. So it's a little bit different from what we're talking about, but it is still important to notice or to see that the cold therapy method works. Of course, we know cold therapy is great for pain management. I personally use it for nerve damage in my leg and dealing with the pain for that comes from that. And I know plenty of people who use it for back injuries, shoulder injuries, et cetera. Um, I think it is interesting to see that it's helping neuropathy pain versus making it worse because uh, that is a fear for a lot of people that have it. This study came out of the National Library of Medicine. Our third study was specifically cold immersion recovery in diabetic foot. The third study delved into cold immersion recovery responses in diabetic feet with neuropathy. The research, which was conducted on 81 subjects, utilized a thermography system with liquid crystals. Diabetic patients with neuropathy exhibited poor recovery times after cold immersion, indicating potential thermoreceptor degeneration. The study underscores the importance of early identification to lower to reduce the lower limb amputations in diabetic patients. So what that means is it did help with the pain management. However, it seemed to take longer for them to recover uh, full feeling. Now, it's important to note that that's recovery time compared to a healthy foot. And so, yes, you would expect the recovery time to be longer, but it didn't necessarily mean that it was bad or that they shouldn't do it. It just meant that it might take longer for them to warm up in that area. That study came also from the National Library of Medicine, specifically the International Wound Journal. The last study is a little bit less structured. It comes from us from blbchronicpain.co.uk. Uh, and essentially, it is a personal recap from a 28 year old who is experiencing diabetic neuropathy. He conducted his own personal study on if cold plunge, cold immersion, and cold swimming help the pain in his feet. This 20 year old is a triathlete who conventional methods had failed. So he decided to go ahead and try cold swimming. 
and notice a significant reduction in pain after swimming in the cold open water. While this case is compelling, it's crucial to note the approach carries risks and more research is needed, again, to determine the effectiveness and safety of it. But many people do turn to cold therapy because conventional methods just aren't working. And that is one of the reasons that we like going to the science of it, because there is so many ways that cold therapy can help beyond just muscle recovery or um, mental resilience and immune boosting. That's why every Wednesday we're going to be delving into studies. And again, like I said, if you join icewellnessjournal.com slash challenge, which is our monthly membership, we do send out a monthly newsletter that includes links to studies, links to podcasts, uh, links to YouTube videos, other experts to look into, et cetera. As I wrap it up, guys, please do remember to consult a healthcare professional if you have any questions. We get a lot of questions in my Facebook group about heart conditions, things like that. And if you are going to plunge for the first time, I do highly recommend that you have someone there with you just in case. Uh, you don't really know what your body's going to do. So if you go into shock or if it becomes too much, it's really important to have somebody else there with you just to make sure that you're safe. So be safe plunging. Happy plunging, guys. We'll catch you in the next one.